Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, we're gonna dive into the aux system within Trap Code Particular. The aux system is essentially a particle system within a particle system. And to show this, I'll mostly be using the designer, just so we can get a much more visual experience with this. The aux system can be used for motion graphics designs like this one that you're seeing right here. It's also very useful in explosions if you're doing compositing and, and visual effects. So we'll dive into a couple different examples um, and we'll start with this one right here. So I'm gonna reset to our default settings and just talk about some basic terminology. Everything we've been doing so far has been using these particles right here. We're gonna refer to these as the main particles. The aux system can take the main particles and turn them into particle generators. So if I go to this aux system block, the first parameter here is an emit control. Now, at bounce event is something that we'll cover in another lesson because that gets into physics bounce, but we're gonna set this to continuously and this will have the main particles continuously emit particles. Now, I was hesitant to say that the aux system will turn every particle into a particle generator, and that is because the next setting here is the emit probability. So if I set this to 50%, there's a 50-50 chance of whether a main particle will become a generator or not. You can also define a beginning and end period in which the main particles will be emitters, so they don't have to emit particles for the entire duration of their life. Pretty cool. Now, as we're seeing, there's kind of a dotted trail behind each particle. The density of that trail is going to come down to the particles per second. So the more particles per second we have in the aux system, the more dense that particle line will be. That line can get longer if we adjust the overall lifespan of the aux particles. By default, they're pretty short at a half second. So if I set this to one full second and I drag around, we can see that the aux particles are living a much longer life. Now, let's highlight a little bit of the differences you'll find between the aux system and the controls of the main particle. So when I set the color for the main particle, let's say I set this to a blue, and I'll turn up the size a little bit to make it easier to see. The main particle color is going to be independent from the aux system color. And I remember when I was first learning particular, and there's a really cool preset called organic lines, and it kind of sweeps across, and I remember trying to change the color of it, going to the particle section, changing the color, and nothing was actually happening. Sometimes when you're using the aux system, you will effectively turn off the main particles by either setting the opacity or the size to zero. So you'll have this particle color right here, but this isn't going to affect anything. We can define the particle color in the aux system a few different ways. We have the same methods that you'll find in the main particles where we can define a color at the beginning of its lifespan and it will always use that color. We can have it move through a color ramp, which actually looks pretty cool. Uh, in fact, it will look cooler if we change the blend mode from normal to something else like screen. There we go. So we can have it move through a gradient or we can have it randomly choose from a gradient, which ends up kind of noisy and I find not as useful. But there's another method that we have, which is to inherit the color from the main particle. And I'm gonna zip back over to this. In fact, uh, I'm gonna hit randomize just to get something a little more different. So I can define a gradient and I can inherit the color from the main particle to 100%, or I can dial it somewhere in between. Let's say if I set this to 50%, it's gonna tint it a little bit blue and also use this gradient map right here. So lots of different options. So for that icy brush look that I was showing you at the beginning, I'm going to have these kind of fade out over time. So we have the same size and opacity graphs that you find in the particle section. So right here we have opacity. I'll set a linear fade like so. So when I move this around, you notice that it is inheriting that velocity. We learned early on about how particle velocity can be inherited 
from the emitter. So as I drag this around, even though those main particles aren't visible, their motion is still being inherited from the motion of the emitter. And as I throw those main particles, the box particles trail along with them. So in this case, maybe I want to lower the velocity from motion just a little bit. But I'm going to do something else that causes these particles to slow down and kind of grow out a little bit more like ice and rather than kind of shooting off in different directions like that. And I'm going to use something in the physics section that I haven't covered in much detail, which is the air resistance. So it's as if the particle, as it moves through space, encounters some sort of friction that slows it down. A good example of this would be like fireworks or some sort of debris explosion with very small particles. The particle moving through the air will cause some friction and that friction will slow the particle down. So if I turn this air resistance up, let's say to I don't know, one and a half, we'll see that the particles are not moving quite as far because they are slowing down over the course of their lifespan. So air resistance and particle velocity are one of those things you're going to want to kind of use together. I often go to velocity and air resistance back and forth a few times. As I turn up the air resistance, I tend to want to turn up the velocity too. Now they're not exactly going to counteract each other. The particles will still move faster if I turn up the velocity and the particles will continue to decelerate over time. It's just that the effect of the high velocity and the air resistance together will just be more pronounced. Now let's talk about some deeper concepts with regard to particle velocity. You'll notice in here we have particle velocity for the aux system and we have inherit main velocity also for the aux system. This is in addition to the particle velocity that we have here in the main particle as well as the inherit velocity from motion in the main particle. So what are the differences? So as I drag this around you'll notice that it is throwing the particles in that direction as I inherit more and more velocity. So if I throw this you'll see that these particles are now moving in that direction because the main particles are inheriting this velocity and they are drawing on those aux particles. Great. Let's turn this back down. Let's set this to maybe 15. When I define the particle velocity, this is the aux particle's velocity on its own. So it is being drawn on by the main particle. The velocity itself is how quickly it is going to move from that original path behind the main particle. Essentially, this will kind of end up looking like a, a bit of a noise trail behind the particles the more I turn it up, because the particles are uniformly moving in different directions. So let's turn this up quite a bit just to see exactly the effect of this. So rather than being a straight line behind the main particle, they are now scattering with their own velocity. So that is the aux particle velocity. Now the inherit main velocity is totally different from that. This is how much it inherits in the direction of the main particle. By default it is set to a inherit main velocity of zero. As the main particle moves the aux particles simply draw on behind it and do not move at all. If we'd like those particles to inherit the velocity we can turn this up. And keep in mind, velocity isn't just speed. Velocity is not how fast something is moving, it's how fast and in what direction it is moving. And in our case, it's in what direction in all three axes. So as I turn this up and I move my particles around, you'll see that the aux particles are actually moving along with the main particles, rather than being drawn on like a paintbrush by the main particles. Let's just turn this up and down a few times so we can show the exact differences between the two. So you notice towards the end of the lifespan of the aux particles, they kind of move back into place where the main particle is because it's inheriting its velocity. So it's kind of moving back into the space where the main particle is. Turning up the aux particle velocity as well will change that up a bit. So it's 
moving with it, but it's also getting its own velocity. So there's lots of different combinations here with the aux particle velocity. In terms of this uh, icy look I'm going for, I really do want that kind of paintbrush effect so that the main particles are simply drawing on the, the aux particles. And I could have maybe a little bit of particle velocity, but I don't want a, lo a lot. I want that kind of clean streak look. Now in terms of particle types, the aux system is not limited to any specific particle type. You have all of the same options, including all of the custom particles. Now being that we've spent two full lessons on particle types, I don't really feel like I need to go into these in detail. All of the different particle types that I've covered in the particle lessons in this series are all the same as you will find here. So you'll get all the same options, they will all have the same look. Note that if you do select something like a sprite, you will also have the same sprite chooser that you would find in the main particle. Such as something like this star, which is actually a pretty cool effect. It does run a bit slower as we use a custom particle for that aux system. Keep in mind, when we are generating 100 particles per second, and then to each of those 100 particles per second, we're generating another 31 particles per second, you get a lot of particles very quickly. So for something like this, bringing the particle count down just a little bit if you can, definitely will help out with your speed. Okay, I'll set this back to the sphere, and set this size back to whatever we had it before. Oh, and I also need to turn the particles per second back up. That is most of the aux system. So we've got the top area here, which is how particles are emitted, which is basically like the emitter section. We have the particle section here where we define the type of particle. Again, it's like the particle section here. We have the size and transformations as well as opacity graph right here so again like the particle section and also the color which is essentially like the color section of the main particle and then at the bottom we have this sort of mini physics section so we have a gravity control that allows us to apply gravity specifically to the aux particle so if i turn this up this will have the aux particles accelerate downward but not the main particles the main particles will be affected by gravity using this gravity block right here. So we can have gravity actually moving in two totally different directions. So I can have the main particles being dragged down, but I can also set the gravity to a negative direction so that the particles actually go in the opposite direction, which is kind of cool. We also have an independent air resistance. So as the aux particles move through space, which they're not moving a whole lot, but uh, they will encounter uh, friction. Now we can have the wind affect the particles, but we don't actually have any wind going on right now. So this is essentially a throttle to the wind that you've already set. So let's say that I go into my physics section and I turn up the wind and I blow my main particles in one direction. I can also tell the aux particles to be affected by that wind as well. And this essentially will kind of double up the effect of the wind. This does not allow for a negative value. So you either have the particles be affected by the wind or not. I'm going to reset this wind back to zero. And maybe I can reset some of this other stuff here. Let's kind of get back to our main settings that we were working with before. And let's talk about that turbulence. So we've talked a lot about turbulence in terms of how this can affect our particles, but we talked about it in terms of how it affects the main particles. So again, if I turn up the effect position, the main particles will move through that turbulent field. It's a 3D fractal and the values of the fractal push our particles in one direction in space or another direction in space. So as those main particles kind of wiggle around, they'll kind of draw that wiggling path. 
But right now, the turbulence isn't actually affecting the aux particles. Let me uh, turn up this velocity and turn up the lifespan as well, just so we can get a good look at this. In fact, let me change the emitter here. So I'm going to set this to a box and we'll make this, actually we'll make it long in the X. So I'll set this to 1500 in X and Y. And instead of having this be uniform, I'll make this directional and just point this straight up. And I'm going to lower the air resistance just to give these a little bit more freedom of movement. And maybe I'll move this emitter position down. So I'll turn up the particles per second on this aux system, and let's turn down this particle velocity so we kind of smooth out this line. So the main particles are drawing on and moving through that turbulent field, but the aux particles are only drawing that path. They are not being affected by anything in the physics section. So if I go to the physics section here, the mini physics inside the aux system, as I turn up the turbulence field, the aux particles will now be affected by that fractal field along with the motion path of the particles. I mentioned that the aux system is actually quite useful for creating explosive behaviors. I'm going to go over to my presets. In the single system presets, there is actually a useful preset called Explosion Trail. And this is exactly what I was talking about with explosions, where we have something that is exploding and moving outward. It would have some sort of trail behind it, either dust or smoke or whatever. So in this case, we are using the emitter behavior explode. And then we're having the aux system emit continuously. And it's actually inheriting the main particle type in that main particle type is simply set to a sphere. So to tweak this a little bit, I could go to the air resistance, maybe turn this up. Maybe go to the aux system and turn this particle velocity up. And I think the size could probably come down. So this is a really good way to create things like fireworks. If I go in here and add some color to the main particle, and randomize the color a little bit. Now, keep in mind, when I randomize the color here, this is only randomizing the main particle. So the color will be handed off to the aux particle in this case, because I have the color set to inherit the main color. So now if I turn this up, we'll just get kind of more streaks in the explosion. So this is largely the formula you'll find for a lot of the fireworks presets as well as the explosive presets in here. These uh, fireworks presets can be pretty fun to play with. In, in fact, uh, if we take these and perhaps set this to continuous instead of explode, we can kind of draw on these fireworks like so. So that is the aux system within Trap Code Particular. It's a lot of fun to play with. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with it as you dive in if your forte is either motion graphics or visual effects or somewhere in between. So once again, my name is Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you in the next lesson.